Hello everyone and welcome to the lecture on heat maps. As usual, we start by importing the libraries and modules we need. Import NumPy, Panda, Seaborn and Matplotlib's PyPlot. And we have the special function to help us visualize our graph in Jupyter Notebook. Heat maps are a colorful map and they consist of a lot of rectangular matrices. To look at those, let's create some data. We'll use NumPy's RAND method to create a normally distributed sample. And we'll store our data in a variable called normal. So we'll call NumPy's random that RAND method and let's create a 12 by 15 array. And what we'll do is we'll call the heat map method that Seaborn has. So SNS that heat map and we'll simply pass our normal data that we created and run it. So here we have a heat map. Okay. So we have a bunch of rectangular matrices and it's very colorful. So the darker the color, the higher the value. Here on the side we have key. So the darker means the darker ones means higher value. And in our heat map here, the values range from zero to one. So the darker ones are higher. That means closer to one. So the dark colors are closer to one whereas the lighter colors are closer to zero. So this is the key to reading the heat map. And if we want to display the number for each of our cell, the number value that the cell holds, we can pass another parameter known as anot for annotation. And all we have to do is set that to true. Let's see an example. So we have SNS, that heat map, and then we'll pass our normal data that we created, and then we pass the annotation argument, anot, and set it to true. If we run it now, we'll see that our heat map has now number values. Let me zoom in. So here you see, for instance, that say this cell has a value of 0 0.94. The cell has 0 0.99. You see the darker ones, they have a value closer to one, whereas the light, the lighter colors, colored cells have values close to zero. So 0 0.056 here, 0 0.03, and so on. So in this example, we see that the key ranges from zero to one. If we want, we can also change the value of this key. Let's say we want to show key between zero and two. For that, we'll, has, we'll have to pass two attributes known as the Vmax and Vminimum. Let's see how we can do that. So SNS.heatmap, we have our normal data. And then let's pass the vmin attribute and set it to zero. And let's pass the vmax and set it to one. Or let's set it to two. I think that will be more visible. So if we run it now, here you'll see that the key now ranges from zero to two versus zero to one. And higher values here, values closer to two are darker in color, whereas values close to zero are lighter in color. Since we, since our data's value lies between zero and one, you'll see that the color will resemble up to here. So that's why it's lighter in appearance because we have set 
our keys maximum to be at two. Whereas if we change this Vmax value to even a higher number, the graph will appear, our heat map will appear even lighter. Let me show you that. So if I change the Vmax to three, it will appear even lighter. You see, compare this to this. And similarly, if I change this, if I change our Vmax to a lower number, let's say 0 0.5 and run it, it will be darker cause here our key shows up to 0 0.5, but our data has values up to one. That's why you, you see here, most of the spots are darker. Okay, so that's a couple more attributes, V minimum and V maximum. Next, next let's consider some data set that Seaborn has, it's called the flights data set. Let's import it first. For that, we'll use Seaborn's load dataset method. So SNS.load dataset, and then we'll be looking at the flights dataset. So let's save this in a variable called flights. Gee, I'm missing an H here. SNS.load dataset flights. Let's see what our data, the data set looks like. We'll call the head method and run it. So this flights data set consists of data for flights. In year, we have year, months, and passengers. Okay, so for instance, this flight was in January 1949 and it had 112 passengers and if we call the tail method we'll see the last years for our flight data set let me change this to tail run it so we have up to years 1960 okay that's what our data set consists of what we'll do is we'll, pi we'll pivot our flights data set so that we can work and visualize it by using heat maps. Let's do that next. So flights that pivot and let's pass these three columns year, months and passengers. So let's pass months, year and passengers. Passengers. And we'll save it in the same variable flights, in the same object. Now we should be able to see the months and year for our heat map. Those will be the X and Y axis and passengers will be each of our cell for our heat map. So let's call the heat map method, SNS that heat map and we'll pass our flights data set and run it. Great. Here we have year on the X axis and months on the Y axis. We have our key here from zero to 600. Again, the darker the color, the more the number of passengers or the number of passengers is closer to 600. So we can say this is the darkest color in the heat map and I'll say the number of passengers is close to 600 around here. Whereas this is the lightest part of the graph of the heat map and the number of passengers is closer to the 200 level, right? Good. Again, let's pass the annotation or the annot attribute to see the number of passengers in each of our data set, in each of our cell. Let's do that. So SNS.heatmap, we have our flights data set and we'll set the annotation to be true. And 
run it. Okay, here we have the data is presented in an exponent format, but we don't need that. We just need the number of passengers without the, the exponent. So for that, we'll need to pass another attribute. And this attribute is called the FMT attribute. And this is used for string formatting. Okay, so when we add annotations, we can pass the FMT attribute and let's set it to D. So this will allow us to do some string formatting when we add annotations. Let's run it again. Okay, now it's much better, right? Now we can clearly see the number of passengers. So here you see 622, 606 passengers. So closer, closer to 600, whereas the values here are closer to 200. Another thing we can do is we can add lines between each of our cells. For that, we can pass the line width attribute. Let's see how we can do that. So sns.heatmap, we have our price data set and we'll pass the line width attribute and set it to, let's say 0 0.9. We'll adjust the number, we'll adjust once we see what it looks like. Let's run it. Okay, now we have lines between each of our cells for our heat map. And let's add the annotation attribute to and set it to true and FMT. Run it again. Looks much better now, right? Now each cell is separate from the other. We can also pass the V minimum and V maximum attributes to change this key values. So let's do that. Let me copy this, paste it down here, and let's add the V min and V max attributes. Let's change this from, let's say, what's the lowest value here? Around close to 100, right? So between 100 and let's set the Vmax to be equal to 650. I think the highest value is closer to 650. Okay, 622. Yeah, 650 should be good. Let's run it again. Okay, see, now we have change the limit of our key from what it was before to 100 to 650. And the color changed a little bit. So you can adjust this to different values to see the difference in appearance of the shade of our heat map. Great.